Hey guys, what's up? Fellow ACO here. And today I want to kind of do just a short video, but I want to discuss the professional and ethical officer for just a little bit. Um, give a shout out to Officer Paul Patrol. If you guys haven't seen his videos, um, you know, go to you go here in the search bar, type in Officer Paul Patrol, check him out. He's a really funny guy. Uh, subscribe and like to his channel is real good if you guys aren't subscribers and haven't liked my channel go ahead and do it um, and also if you have a question or comment leave it down below all right let's get started so like I said I want to talk about the role of an investigator and you know the ethical officer so as a rule the role of an investigator within the animal control industry you know we're a few different things we are the mediator we're the enforcer, we're the counselor, we're the advocate, and we're the educator. Now, out of all of those that I said, I would have to say within this, the biggest hat that we wear is the educator. Because you have to think, not only are we educating the public, we're educating prosecutors, judges, lawmakers, other law enforcement agencies, you know, we are the experts and when it comes to animal law or animal issues, you know, most people in those professions really don't care a whole lot. I, I guess I shouldn't say care, but just simply don't take the time to really understand um, what it is that we do and, and why we're passionate about it. But, you know, I have to say in this job, you know, the two most common is educator and enforcer because we do enforce the state statutes, the city ordinances, um, county resolutions, whatever it may be. And we educate the public into, you know, leash law and spay and neutering, um, you know, adopt, don't shop, those type of things. Um, and and what, what the importance of them is. Um, but, you know, also you have to take in consideration, you know, the mediator because you're gonna go to a call where uh, Bob's bickering with Jim and you have to mediate the, the situation to you know get through the process um, It happens all the time it happens all the time so Those are some of the the hats that we wear in this particular job and you know, like I said um, currently in Ohio is where I uh, reside at and where I work out of an agency. Um, there's currently a, a House Bill 37. It's getting um, through the process and we're hoping that it passes this year, which will change the way dog wardens operate and fingers crossed that it goes through because I think it'll be a very beneficial th thing for us. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of agencies that go through and, and talk with lawmakers and say, okay, here's what's on current in legislation, here's how we can make it better. And that's where our education comes in. Um, <clears throat> not only that, but um, responsibilities and our duties. So we need to know what our authority is. Um, and so when every time I get a new recruit, I tell them, I say, listen, one number one thing you need to know is what section of the code you get your powers from because ultimately that is where you start from everything else will come into place but you have to know where your authorities are what your authority is and where it comes from from the law because people will question so know what your authority is and know where you get it where it falls under whatever section uh, of the law you are, whether it's a, a revised code or a penal code or whatever it may be in the area you live in, um, know what your authority is. Um, and also know the law. Stay current on the law. Law changes all the time. They make little adjustments, but a little word of um, and or shall can change it dr tremendously. Um, in our line of work and within within law so stay current on the law know what it is um, abide by the law obviously guys you know you don't as an ACO you don't want to be uh, breaking any of the law licensing law leash law any of the laws abide by the law okay you enforce it you should abide by it all right other again another thing use common sense 
you know, if it, what's the saying, if it quacks like a duck, walks like a duck, sounds like a duck, I'm sure I messed that up, but it, guess what, it's a duck. Um, and the last thing, and probably one of the most important things is avoid ethical corruption, okay? You, you know, this job, this line of profession has suffered tremendously over the years from um, people that get hired in that don't take this profession seriously and um, they've either physically abused an animal or they've uh, positive for or tested positive for cocaine methamphetamine or some sort of narcotic um, uh, they, they just don't care personate other law enforcement those type of things and you know our profession it's an uphill battle constantly of getting the respect that we deserve in the profession that we do um, because not a lot of people can do what we do um, there is things where you have to go home at night you don't share it with others because you know you don't want to give them bring them down or um, you know give them a picture that they don't need to see I mean who wants to see a five-year-old child mauled to death or, or mauled severely you know nobody wants to see that but it's a picture that we have um, and we have to live with but we deserve more respect than what we get within our industry so um, you know don't mess up what you guys have it's a really good place to be um, you know you have to put a lot of blood sweat and tears into it but at the end of the day it's worth it you know always get in the mindset how can I leave this place better um, today than what it was yesterday and guys if I if you see me looking down I have some notes here so just bear with me I can't memorize all this so I promise um, so let's talk a little bit for qualities of a good investigator so you need to be diplomatic and understanding okay so you need to be able to build a uh, rapport with an individual and how many times do you go to a dog bite um, investigation to where there's an injury a traumatic injury I, I once had a victim who um, was bit severely in the face received multiple stitches and and suffered now suffers from you know PTSD and and other things due to the traumatic effect of a dog bite um, you know it's a big deal a lot of stuff happens with it so you need to know when to show sympathy and empathy um, you know while conducting an investigation um, and so you got to be understanding in this profession if you just show up and oh I'm a big tough guy I you know I'm just here for the long no you got to be able to say oh I'm sorry to hear that or listen bud you can't let your dog run at large you have to be able to understand the difference between those two um, and show that that's what's going to make a good investigator that's what's going to make a good individual in this job is to know the difference um, another thing diffuse ten, diffuse intense situations if you got an individual who's being very hostile you know one of the things that that I love to do and that makes me feel good is I deal with an individual that is um, oh yeah you know, I, you know I ain't going to buy my dog tag and this and that and da 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 but by the end of the conversation they're apologizing for yelling at you cussing at you and they're eating out of the palm of your hand so you have to be able to diffuse uh, a t intense situation and good communication skills guys good communication skill skills listen I can't even talk Good communication skills um, is is very important in this industry. Um, you know, there's a verbal judicial, very good to check into. I probably didn't say that right, but guess what? It's late. <laughs> um, and then the next thing is to uh, be objective and impartial. You know, you're not the judge, you're not the jury, you're not the executional. <laughs> executioner. See, guys, give me a break. Uh, but you're not, you're not either one of those, okay? 
it's your job as an investigator to get the right information, to get the facts of the case, present those facts uh, to a prosecutor or judge, let everybody else worry about all the other stuff. It's your job to present the case and to make the final determination on the case um, based upon the facts. If you know, judge will determine other things, prosecutor will determine other things, but strictly stick to the facts of the case. Okay, it's very important. Um, so your good qualities are going to be your communication skills. That's ultimately what it boils down to. You know, you have to be able to I always tell everybody, imagine there's a brick wall. Everybody that you go up to. It's your job as the investigator to take that wall down brick by brick by talking to an individual. Okay? Understand what they want. Understand who they are. For instance, you're walking up to a, a, a door and you notice there's a blue flower pot knock on the door speak to them introduce yourself identify who you are the department you're with the reason for your visit and once you would do those and you're talking a little bit say hey by the way where'd you get that blue flower flower pot my wife's been looking for one of those you know i, I haven't been able to find one where'd you get that oh i bought that at walmart oh really that's pretty cool blah 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 blah, blah. and then you start to build a conversation build rapport with that individual you know you can I've done it from seeing a, a flower, um, a car in the driveway, a statue, whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. You can find something, okay? Look for those little details, um, and it will allow you to go a long way in this field. The other thing, um, you have to be able to love animals. You know, you have to be able to love animals to do this job. To be a good investigator, you need to be able to love animals and know what they are, identify what they are, what you're looking for. So if you got a, a cruelty case, you have to be identify if I have a German Shepherd, you know, this is the average weight of what a healthy Shepherd is. This is what it has currently. Does this fall within the uh, cruelty statute? Um, this type of thing. So um, be observant in this, guys. So... I know that's a kind of a me just rambling on about some stuff, but you know I've been thinking about it a lot. And a good quality investigator is important in this job, and and being an ethical officer and doing what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it. Um, you know, just because your boss isn't there watching you doesn't mean you shouldn't be doing the right thing. So. All right, guys, that's enough of me just rambling on. I apologize, but listen, I hope you like this video. If it helps you, let me know. Leave a comment down below. Again, like I said before, if you haven't um, liked or subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do so. If you guys want to see a different video or see um, certain equipment or uh, vehicle, those type of things, let me know um, in a comment below. But again, guys, until next time, we'll see you.